Chiefs fan, but I am a Chiefs fan, which means today I am better than him, Travis Willingham. Next up, she could always kick my ass, but now, oh my God, she could probably kill me and I say thank you, it's Marisha Ray. I would die for, the woman I would kill for, the woman who maybe I will propose to later. It is Ashley Johnson. Coming up next, we have a man with the voice of an angel, but the sense of humor is somebody who is really heckin' deranged. It is Sam Regal. Shakespeare than me, which is actually really impressive. It's Liam O'Brien. And coming up next, we have the horse girl of my heart. So she is actually the most important person to me. It's Laura Bailey. Rounding up the bunch, the man, the myth, the legend, the one who is single-handedly keeping the best industry afloat, it is Matthew Mercer! How are you? Hello. Hi. Also, Matt, you're not wearing a vest, so like now my joke doesn't make sense anymore. That's really, really rude. Um, all right, so are you guys ready to answer some questions? All I want to do is talk about that dog in the first There's row. There's a dog? Sunglasses. Oh my god! Oh my Why is god! Why so chill? What? Okay, wait. Are we all doing? I, I gotta. I... We lost Ashley. She's gone. Look at, look at your baby. It's also got shoes. There's a dog with sunglasses, guys. Can we bring the dog up? Is that against the rules? Can this whole panel be the dog? <gasps> dog, 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 dog. Oh! Look at the baby! Oh my goodness, can you do jumpy? The dog's coming on stage. <laughs> Oh my this goodness. is already the greatest panel that's ever had. Oh my goodness! Hello! Oh no! Oh, butt scratches! Oh, the butt scratches! Oh, the first the rule of theater is never oh. share the stage with animals or children. Look at the baby! Now we have both. Oh my goodness! I'm so sorry, guys. This panel has already devolved. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Panel's off, it's just playtime now. <laughs> Say hi. Oh this my is, goodness. Oh hello. Oh this hello. Is this is your panel. Now. I mean, you, you can't bring a dog and then expect me to not give it pets. Oh, my shoes on! Oh! <laughs> this is the whole thing. Don't apologize this is what's okay to ever happen to us. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, <laughs> yeah, we got we got right, so sorry, so sorry. All right, uh, <laughs> even though there is a dog here, which you are welcome to stay, my little sweet baby. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. Oh, go get your sword. Go get your sword, sweet baby. Go get your sword, sweet baby bean. Wait, oh, oh, this was... is this a sword fighting dog? Yeah. Oh, oh. Okay, okay. Oh, lightsaber. Oh, she's a lightsaber oh, dog? Is, oh my goodness. All right, go do your job. We love you. I love okay. Oh, bye, baby. Oh, good oh, shakies. Check it out. Oh, good shakies. Come on. Oh, 
gonna be real. That is my favorite Dark Souls boss. I just, oh my god. Thank you. Oh. Well, that happened. Every, thank you, everybody. Good night. <laughs> um, well, I don't know how to follow that. Um, I'm so sorry I'm not a dog. Uh, this has definitely made the panel worse, but uh, hi guys. Welcome to Seattle. <laughs> Uh, how are you? How are you enjoying Seattle? Is it nice? It's so nice. The weather outside is weather. amazing. <laughs> weather. I know that's uh, literally though. We're coming from somewhere where it's never cold in mm -hmm. the winter, at least not enough. And so some of us are. Some of us, Ashley and I, are going and standing oh, outside no, with like little it. short sleeves on and just absorbing the cold and the rain and the drizzle. It's the best. I hate it. I hate it here. <laughs> it's awful. I hate it. <laughs> All right, so we're actually going to start panel questions as much as I just wish we could pet dogs. All right, so this is for everyone. You guys have made it to Ruidus. So how does it feel to be on the moon? Has it been we on the moon, moon, baby? It's amazing. It's pretty great. Yeah, you go, Laura. Well, it's everything I ever dreamed it would be. <laughs> <laughs> he and did world dream about peace. it a lot. No, it's cool. We've been playing in Matt's world for so many years now, and in the last few months, we've uh, experienced the Shattered Teeth, which was so new and weird, and now we're in a totally different part of not even the world, the universe, and it's just so wild that he can still surprise us with these these twists and turns in different parts of Exandria that we haven't experienced. It's so fun to to, to experience for the, for the first time with you all. And we're only just scratching the surface. Yeah. Literally. Yeah, I, f I feel like there's more on the moon than I was anticipating because I'm a simpleton, but I just figured there was like a, a city underneath the, the, you know, divine barrier that was there, but then there's subterranean levels and things that go deep towards the core, and I just thought we were going to land there and instantly be in trouble, which we were because we're a bunch of asshats, but... <laughs> Other than that, like learning there are all these new people and these creatures and uh, it's more complicated than we could have imagined. Like it's it's so good and we're just trying not to wreck everything the second that we get to a new location. <laughs> I feel like I'm surprised that you didn't know there was more on the moon. Have you never played Destiny? It's just a lot of moon stuff. What's Destiny? Oh my god. All right. Well, we're going to move on. Sam and Ashley. Oh, Sam and Ashley. That's, yeah. Oh, oh, no, that's me. Yeah, that is you. Uh, what went through Fern and FCG's heads during your encounter with Odahan Thule? <sighs> that was, that was a bit of a mistake. <laughs> but thankfully, Sam had some very good ideas. I feel like we went there with the best intentions of like, okay, we, we'll, we'll make sure that the caravan, that, that they're not going to tell on us. So we'll follow these, these, the, 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 the caravan. We were being responsible. We were being responsible. And then um, that turned quickly. Yeah, so I didn't really have a backup plan as we were doing this. I had one spell left, pretty much. And I didn't think it was going to work. And you did have a backup plan. Your backup plan was to give up, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> Mine was to just play dead. <laughs> no, I, yeah, it was, I mean, I did have a plan just in case, but I don't think it would have been a good one. And what was it? Well, I was just going to, I don't know if give I want up. to say it. Why? It's not going to happen? No, in I mean, in case, it, I don't know, it could. Oh. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to do not make me. I would have just gone with her. I would have just been like, I give up. Giving up. I'll just go with you. It's fine. It's not, wasn't that exciting, guys. <laughs> I was trying to not say it because it would have sounded more mysterious and cool. But now you know, there's not, not a lot going on up here sometimes. <laughs> 
Ashley, Ashley, let me save you and we'll go on to Talison here. <laughs> Uh, I, but I, I am glad that uh, Matt let me do the spell that that, uh, that I did, the way that I did it. I think technically rules as written, maybe it doesn't work, but I uh, thank you for letting it work, Matt, because it was... Well, I, awesome. I, as I look back at it afterwards, I was like, well, technically you're incapacitated while you're, you know, banished, or while you're transforming, so it would have ended the spell, but it kind of would have made for the same sort of circumstance anyway, that if you would have just held it for a minute, it yep. would have led to a chaotic release, so it didn't change too much, which is always my favorite thing. Um, but it made for a really epic moment, and the only time I've ever considered using banishment on yourself as a defensive measure. I'd never considered that. Why do you, why are you so weird? Uh, Taliesin, yeah. Ashton has been gentle allies with the All Minds Burn for many years. Is he worried there could be repercussions if Bell's Hells don't plant the brood pit on the ruddy moon? Nah. Oh, uh... Mostly you do a favor for a friend, and if they're like, hey, I've got this plant of questionable legality that may have some psychotropic uh, effects, and we would love for you to take it over to like, I don't know, your somebody's parents' house and just plant it in the back, you do it, you don't ask a lot of questions. I'm sure there's probably gonna be some repercussions. Is this just a story you're telling from your past? Like, uh... I don't know what you're, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> got it, got it, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I was just doing a favor for a friend, and they're cool. A little weird, you know, a bit. Again, this is so not different. Than yes, it is, in fact, a, 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 you know, a, a mentally connected cult of people living in a weird trash city who um, all eat little chunks of brain to gain power. But I, they're, I mean, honestly, we've met weirder people in the last... Been there, yeah, yeah, for game. sure, yeah. I'm all for it. I'm delighted. I think they need more weird brain-eating cults on the moon. Please, break everything. I want to break everything. Uh, Matt, how excited are you to be finally able to reveal the deep history of Ruidus, and how long have you had it planned out? I'm guessing the answer is since you were born. <laughs> Sure, we'll go with that. Uh, I'm super excited. I've, I've, I've had loosely the ideas for this since the beginning of the campaign, the first campaign. Um, and then being able to just kind of flesh it out slowly over time and then hope, hoping that we'll get to a third campaign where we can actually get to these themes and these reveals and now that we're finally getting there, it's super exciting and there's still so much. Like I said, it just scratched the surface. Like, there's so much, and I don't even know if we'll get to all of it, because that's how RPGs work. But, uh, yeah, I'm having a good time. You have so much space in that brain, and it's all taken up, and I'm like, where does it end? And I fear that it doesn't. No, it ends. I just, I forgot most of my childhood and oh, yeah, no, my family. Sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, occasionally, I have to re-meet Travis, but, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, Honestly, it's worth it. it makes sense. Like, algebra, whew, moon's in there. Got I'm it. I'm saying. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, Liam, Your. how does it feel slowly teasing out the deal that Orem made with Nana Mori, and how does he feel about the rest of Bell's Hells finding out? And more, I am so sorry. That's I, I want to ask everybody else, I guess, because it, it's only peaked out in like frenetic moments, so it's arguably not been noticed yet. That's right. We don't know. I don't think so. Um, and I don't remember wh what they've seen and what I've seen, so I'm trying to, be, to parse words here, but yeah, anytime he's resorted to it, he's either been submerged in water or uh, had giant battle uh, obstruction in the way and everyone was in the middle of the poo. Uh, so, there's a kid right there. There's two kids right there. Two kids. Um, <laughs> I mean, he's not trying to hide it, though, either. He, 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 he's not even really ashamed of it. It's, uh, it only affects him, um, and it's his best friend's grandma. So I don't know, it's like, it is really a, 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 a pickle, but it's not the worst. I always know what's going on with my son. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and Scanlon. And Ashton. And Imogen, I'm everybody's father. <laughs> is there a spell? Is there a paternity test spell in in D and D? Oh, is there something like that? Can we make one? Can you shine a black light on Orm and Scanlan? That's a cantrip none of you want. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants that in this group. <laughs> is as Nana Mori actually the Mori Povich? Yeah, it's oh, the Nana Mori Povich show. Oh, Matt, and you're the father. <laughs> 
I just love this Genghis Khan persona that Chetney is becoming. I <laughs> just everyone has a little Genghis Khan. <laughs> I'm also just so glad to have magic back. I miss it so much. Oh. I just want a little sprinkle. Well, and you did that hex, right? You did the hex on somebody once. But I feel like, like you said, it's so chaotic in the battle. If someone is hexed, I feel like Londa would just be like, Ooh, look at what I just did. <laughs> which actually, speaking of which, Marisha, with everything happening, Lada is relying on Delilah's powers and influence a lot more. Where is Lada's mental state right now, and how much control does Delilah have? <laughs> That's worrying. <laughs> I can tell everyone. <laughs> Where is any of our mental states right now, really? Um, I don't know. I mean, in terms of the how much control does Delilah have, that's the question, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think um, I think Lana is just kind of starting to, to peek into like a we're about to go into uncharted territory and we have to do things. We have to succeed by any means necessary. And that by many, any means necessary, little addendum can get a little scary. So. Fun scary. Fun scary. Uh, yeah. Travis. Mm. <laughs> uh, Chetney's deal with Nana it will result in him being the most famous toy maker the world has ever known. <laughs> So why phrase it that deal in that way? Is there any, you know, fear of repercussions about that really vague phrasing? None. <laughs> Do you know why, Mika? Why? Because I completely forgot that how you phrase <laughs> which is important. No! In that moment, I just knew I wanted to ask Nana Mori something, and then I was like, oh, S word. <clears throat> I should phrase this carefully, and then I remembered that Chetney's 400 years old, and I don't really care. <laughs> so, I mean, who also goes to the, is it the Fate Stitcher? Yeah, Fate Stitcher. Who goes to the Fate Stitcher and asks to become the greatest toy maker the world has ever known? <laughs> I just love, I love that the, mo like, the moment there is a not overtly antagonistic hag type fey entity in the campaign two of you rush at the chance to make a deal that makes me so happy yeah yeah we see them so rarely that was absolutely going to happen even if it had horrible 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 consequences if if yeah <laughs> when <laughs> i hope no that, that was the best that was the best part of that that whole realm is just uh, exploring it and also also trying to get a, a peek into who nana mori actually is because the presentation of her portrayed so brilliantly by matt mercer is so creepy but i want to know what the dark side of the fate stitcher is especially since burn loves her so much I just love that whenever you guys see something possibly terrifying, you poke it with a stick. <laughs> Must poke. Do not leave alone. That is a waste of time. Shout out to all our button pushing players out there. <laughs> GM's best friend. Uh, a general question to the couch full of lovely people. Uh, what is it like interacting with a brand new, never met in any other campaign, community that is the Ruidians? them. Yeah. I love what you've done with their like symbiotic relationship between the oh my gosh I, I just think it's so unique and so creative and I want to bring them to Alexandria. Well that's definitely an opportunity I guess. I, I'm hoping that happens. <laughs> it's also so cool that like we've been doing all these um these all this dreaming like the whole campaign lots of dreams and it turns out that uh, dream, dreaming and receiving dreams and listening in on dreams is such a is such a vital part of their existence and stuff. It's so, it's super cool. And did you just come up with that on the fly during the campaign, or was that always the thing? No, that was that was part of the intent. I mean, dreams were also a big thing to the last campaign. I love dreams as just a device for storytelling. They're very impactful to me. A lot of things that I you know creatively develop on or, uh, often stem from dreams that I've had. And so for me, I think it's a, it's a great place for musing and inspiration. But the idea of like an entire 
society of individuals that have shaped their personas around living every evening in somebody else's dreams, that sort of interesting longing and mixture of, to them, alien cultures that they've then kind of absorbed as their own, as this kind of either ideal or fear or whatever you know their experiences may be, and then creating a, a society that is also very oddly mixed up from different cultures around Alexandria as well. So yeah, I'm having fun developing it. I'm still just, I've been so eager to get here. Sure. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I, I want to be careful about how much gets thrown in your face because it can be a lot. Sure. I also love that we have no context for anything. You know, if you play in a fantasy world, everyone up here has been reading and watching and playing video games that are fantasy. And you know, we all know elves, we all know dwarves. We have no idea what to expect in any corner of the moon. I, th I think we were expecting one kind of alien uh, encounter uh, once we got there, and I'm starting to lose tracks. It's really, really cool. Yeah, I, I feel like I anticipated, like, when you walk into a new town in an RPG, and you're like, oh, every NPC is the same person. I don't know. I feel like it was just going to be one type of person, and... Did not anticipate a whole other world. This DLC is crazy. <laughs> I am, I am Expansion. personally... Expansion. I'm personally determined to have the moon's first rodeo. Ooh. Because those bloody buffaloes, first of all, I just want to see if I can hang on for like eight seconds, see how ornery they are, and then I'll transform into a werewolf and then just eat one. <laughs> it's gotta happen. <laughs> I just love that it's also a whole new realm of beasts for Fern to now transform into. Uh -huh. <laughs> Bingo. I also, I also feel like I, I love it because I probably will never get to go to another planet myself as Ashley Johnson. Not with that attitude. True. Don't let your dreams be dreams. Just I know. go to a planet. Go to a planet. I mean, just make it happen. Um, so I'm excited that we get to, to travel. I was very excited about going to the moon. I feel like we've been begging you for multiple campaigns now to let us go to the moon and for it to finally happen. Your patience has been rewarded. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, that was everyone. Uh, <laughs> Laura, how has it been for Imogen to be on Ruidus and tapping into its powers directly? How does she feel about her brush with Rithdafos and uh, what's going on there? What is going on there? Tell yeah, what is going on there? Uh, I... Uh, like, how much do I give away right now? <clears throat> Everything. The pull, like the pull is strong, right? Um, and every time that she gives into it, I know I'm rolling for it, but also in my head I'm going, do I even need to roll for it at this point, right? Um, because I think it's 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 becoming a very strong desire to feel part of it. That's why I ask, do you do you want to resist? I know. I know. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Um, <clears throat> also, Whispers. Whispers. This whisper is brought to you by uh, Whiz Kids. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Spoilers, I won't say. Oh. After all that whispering, we get nothing. Yes. <laughs> no, it, it's it's for me as a GM. It's it's. And many of you GMs out there will definitely understand this. When a, when a player hands you backstory, you get to play with. That's wonderful. But when you have a thread of, of mystery that you weave through their narrative and the player trusts and goes with it, it's so much fun to watch them be unmoored from any level of comfort and just be kind of caught in the stream of what's happening. And no one has bigger eyes in those moments than Laura. <laughs> no one looks absolutely like excitedly lost in the stream going, okay. <laughs> it's so hard because my, my always go-to is to be the the good guy of the story. Like, if I play any RPG, anything, sorry. I, I always want to do the good thing, right? So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's really crazy to, um, maybe not. But what is the good thing? I, right? I don't know. <laughs> How many GMs are out there, by the way? Raise your hand if you're a GM. Oh my God. That's a lot. 
good. So many. All right, so everybody who's looking for a GM, look to the nearest person that just raised their hand. Boom, campaign. Also, because of the amazing dog at the beginning, I forgot to ask, could all the cosplayers in this room please Yeah. Stand up? Yeah. <laughs> look at Yasha back there. Oh, is he oh, look at that big back. sword. That Shout sword out to everybody enormous. in body paint today. Y'all are the real ones. True. <laughs> look at that jerk right there. <laughs> oh, like him. Ludinous. <laughs> also, have you guys noticed, like, FCG? He's pointing there? to Ludinous, like, by the way. Like, yes, the FCG out. robot so, like, is incredible. Yeah. We like, were talking about it backstage. It, my voice is in that robot. What? Uh, yes, and the hands move, and if, <gasps> if he makes the uh, if if the he makes the eyes turn red, then it starts to it's my <gasps> voice saying really nasty things. That's so cool. Wait, that is so cool. Like a PlayStation controller in your hand or an Xbox controller with it? Yeah. What? Whoa. That is the coolest thing. You're cool. Like, That's so cool. The eyes are red. That robot's about to rage. <laughs> I've critters are the best. That's, I mean, I feel like we're about to get like full-bodied animatronics of every character in like the next panel. This is crazy. What's really cool is that's a functional buzzsaw. <laughs> okay, By the way, maybe back turn away. His, maybe yeah. turn his eyes not red. That frightens me. All right, no buzzsaws, please. Oh, well, that's nicer. Thank you so much. There you Thank go. you. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, Matt and Marisha. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to frighten you. Um, after, <laughs> after the intensity of the back and forth with Delilah and Laudna, what was it like to interact with slash embody Bodhi and Ropey via the animate object spell? <laughs> Bodhi and Ropey, my loves. I will say I picked, because animate objects is like a six level spell, right? Fifth or sixth? It was the first one that I got. And because all the spells in the book are listed in alphabetical order, Animate Objects was the first one, and I saw it. Alphabetical order. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I saw it. Fifth level spell, okay, thank you. And I saw it, and I was like, well, that's it, I'm done. I don't need to look at any other spells. And I just took it immediately. Remember you were driving in the car, and you're like, I think I'm gonna take Animate Objects. And I immediately went, of course you are. <laughs> Why would you pick anything else? How many more minis do I have to now get to prepare for the anything that can be animated now? I fully thought, like right from the get-go, as soon as you started collecting little toys and puppets, that that was the direction you were going to be going because yes. it's, a, it's a menagerie. It's amazing. Yes. It's pretty amazing. Yes, the Island of Misfit Toys! Oh. Yes! And how creepy is it to have puppets that move and can shank you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's perfect! Yeah. Yeah. All I ask I is don't don't bring to life eight small creatures that have their own initiative order and their own statistics. Marisha, all that I ask players. is you bring to life eight <laughs> tiny creatures with their own Thank statistics. You, yeah, Thank you, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I make you know what, Marisha? Promises. Make it nine. Make it nine creatures. Nine. I mean, how Think fitting would it be if in the final battle, <gasps> You 15. animate a table, a chair, yes. a chest. Yes, a hundred percent. Yeah, we're bringing it back to the top, baby. Right, a baby. candelabra, a, a broom, a, a chest, chest of drawers. <gasps> oh my God, a whole Hello. be our guest scene just for Ladna. <laughs> look, at the, look at this room. Look at oh, the plants every of wood. Single one bring every single so one of these. Stat block, stat block, stat block. Let's no. go. So sorry, Matt. This I'm is a trap a waiting to happen, and you all know it. Yeah, congratulations. We're all under the sort of Damocles for this band. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Matt, just go on Amazon, get a multi-pack of everything, and hold on. I'm so sorry. Uh, I, I see, like, so many people are like, well, this is a new fear suddenly. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I see her faces. You're like, oh. Why is that there? What does that serve? Acoustic. Wait, it's just wood. It's all wood for here. Chutney. It's acoustic. Oh, it's my roof! <laughs> God. As we, we noticed backstage that all of them at least are pretty still, except for like one who's perpetually wobbling over here. It's really excited, so be wary. I call that the lottery. 
Uh, Ashley, oh, I keep frightening everyone, I'm so Hi. sorry. Uh, how is Fern dealing and feeling after discovering that the Sorrow Land, the Sorrow Lord, I'm so sorry, this is my job and I can't speak words. Uh, Zathuda is her father and that she was planned to be Rudus born. Well, I told you all, I was a princess. Um, <laughs> I, I didn't know that actually. Um, the... Yeah, I'm I'm really curious to see <laughs> I'm really curious to see how that I, I, I really do wanna know like why I, I wanna know why. You know, why uh, why? Um, <laughs> um it's exciting because when when we first saw him I was like that hey, guy's yeah, cool and scary and what's that creature I want one? that he gets to ride on. So, I'm gonna probably take it from him at some point. Um, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm excited to see where that goes and what that purpose was for of making Fern Rudus born. Um, but I kinda just, because of my brain, I just forget about it sometimes, and I'm like, Imogen, go get, oh wait, me too, sorry. <laughs> yeah, but it's fun. I'm excited to see where that goes. Sam, oh, perfect handoff. Oh, hi. Perfect timing. Uh, as a new follower of the Changebringer, how is FCG feeling about how disconnected or muted their relationship with the goddess is currently? I'm bad at God stuff. <laughs> I don't, I'm bad at it. Don't say I'm trying to be better, but it's so hard because it's hard to talk to a God in the first place. And now it's even harder because I can't, because we're in a place where you can't talk to them. And there, my, my God is very weird and hairy <laughs> and, and vague. And I want to just have like a heart to heart with her, but, um, but I don't have a heart, <laughs> and, I, and she can't, and I can't talk to her. So it's really hard. I'm hoping when we get back, if we get back home to Alexandria, back to that nice flat Alexandria, <laughs> that I'll have some time to really like commune with her and ask her what's going on and, and what her deal is. Because I, I want to be a good follower. I want to be a good God person. But uh, so far, I've been real bad at it. Just because the signal's bad doesn't mean you don't try and make a call. Aww. Is that a little GM hint right there? No. <laughs> what do you okay. mean? Okay, I'm doing it next episode. <laughs> Talison. Yes. Again, I keep scaring everybody. Ah. So sorry. Talison. Talison. Yes. <laughs> Look deep into my eyes and I will gently ask you. Oh, hi. 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 Uh, what has it been like for Ashton to explore their new Titan abilities and to have such a tangible connection with the past? Boy, uh, it is an interesting mix of absolute wonderful freedom and weird despair. At the same, it's Ashton. They can't be happy for that long. That's not fun. Uh, every oh, it's uh, we all know that person. Please. You know, how do you feel? I'm kind of depressed. Oh, so you're doing good. Good for you. Uh, it's it's your happy place. Uh, God, just at me next time, you're please. <laughs> so yeah, happy is nervousness. You have something to lose. Uh, oh, I know. I'm. <laughs> You met me? Okay, anyway. I love My therapist I, is gonna have so much to talk with me about. I'm here, oh my I, God. I actually get a 10% kick from everybody's therapist who's at this con. That is so, so true. There's a purpose for this. Um, it's uh, it's an interesting rush of, of just being given access to all of this new power and all of this history about who who he is and where they come from and and how that both doesn't necessarily mean what what uh, they were hoping it was going to mean, and that it also led to some really unfortunate uh, personal discoveries and a lot of dumb ideas, and just, it's a lot of just resorting who they are and what that actually means and, and what they've been doing with their life uh, and the sort of person that they at least think they've been. It's been, a, it's been very confusing. And there's also something very weird about, um, it's been interesting thinking about the fact that while in that form, uh, a lot of Ashton's uh, uh, background pain vanishes, which is almost a bad thing. 
because then it means when it hits back again, you are it, it, it is harder to mute immediately. So there's just this real, it's a bender is what it is. It's, it's less of a power kick and more of like going a little bit off, off the rails on a bender. Mm. So. I, have a, I have a question. Mm -hmm. What made you want to give a character chronic pain? Like what made you want to explore that? Wow, okay, yeah. How is no one ever at, well, okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I uh, honestly, it's because uh, I I had TMJ uh, kick. I mean, it's one of those things you're born with. Got worse and worse and worse. Uh, uh, I was a teenager, and just it sort of became one of those things that also I think is one of the reasons why the tremor kicked in. That I have, I have a tremor if you don't know. Uh, and just was sort of one of those things that you just live with and realize that there's just kind of a low lying level of uh, of pain that you have that never really goes away and it's just always there. It's like, a, uh, I'm trying to get through this quickly, uh, to the point where like actually doctors would say, oh yeah, if it went away, you wouldn't even really realize what the hell had been going on because it's just like this passive low level headache that you just have all the time. And uh, I, I, I became interested in, in, in processing some of that and especially friends of mine who also have similar problems where they're just their friends wonder why they're always so fucking irritated. <laughs> like, well, why would you be fucking, yeah, so. It was just, it was an interesting place to come from and you know, what's better than doing therapy publicly on the internet, so. <laughs> there we are, yeah. So, there we are. Isn't that just what D&D &D is? Is like sitting at a table and like processing your problems and then you're like, oh, hoo, 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 hoo. my therapist is gonna have to extend that session tomorrow. Um, but I do know that that means a lot to people because I feel like something like that that maybe isn't seen on the outside isn't talked about as much. And I think that it's really cool. Also, as somebody with chronic migraines, I appreciate you. <laughs> uh, Laura and Leo, sorry. Laura and Leo, can we get you guys the microphones That's so nice, gently? Yeah. yeah. So nice. Yes, Mika. Yes. ASMR. Okay, so. Oh. I'm so no. sorry. I know. I hate it too. I'm so sorry. Uh, both Imogen and Orem sent messages recently, finding that this magic worked again. So, what was it like for Imogen to get a message from Jester? And how did those successes make Orem feel about the non response from Dorian? I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I have to ask these questions. They're on the card. Good question. Dorian's definitely dead. Whoa! Whoa! Whoa. Santa said Dorian's Dorian definitely dead. He is not. Look, the robot's eyes are red. Yeah. Oh, see? You can't say that. You can't say that. He's shaking his head. No. Oh, I'm threatening you with a bus saw. Oh, oh, oh. I think that means no. I think don't say that. Um, I had two minds in that moment when Jester sent me a message because everything in me wanted to just respond in, in kind. Do you know what I mean? Like, it, it triggered the, the Jester response and it was so hard to, to contain it and go, I don't know who this person is. I can't, what, what, what would the response be? So, mm, I'm very excited, <laughs> very excited. <laughs> Uh, I was also just super excited to have Jester resurface in our campaign. And that means she's like, we all love her so much. She's with Caleb. He goes and finds her when he needs to talk to somebody. What happened? Like, did he get a message and then he was like, I can't respond. I have to teleport immediately to where Jester is so that she can help me respond. To yeah. The uh, hello, knock knock. Uh, Jester, are you pooping? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why? What's the big deal? <laughs> Uh, as far as the Dorian of it all, um, there were very... Stop it. Uh, I mean, the, what the Imogen's reasoning was sound. Dorian could have been asleep or away from his rock. 100%. Not 100%, and that's the problem. Um, it's, gonna be, it's just gonna be like Schrodinger's cat for Orm. He'll think like, yeah, of course, it's of course. There's, there's very valid reasons why he wouldn't pick up the call, but it, there, you know, there's 5% doubt in his it head. It was the middle of the night. Caleb was awake, Jester was awake. Well, s w sending's different, you know? It just goes straight to your head. If you don't have the rock right next to you, you're not gonna hear it straight in your head. I hope he's okay. <laughs> he's okay. For the record, 
I didn't realize any of that was going to happen. <laughs> and so it was like, okay, they're going to message Caleb. All right, well, it, I knew in my head that things, the spell functions now for reasons. Um, what are the reasons? <laughs> and then since our Mighty Nine reunion one shot post Solstice, like the Mighty Nine is reunited and they have, they're having their scenario across the world, so Jester would likely be near Caleb. So cool. <laughs> Which meant, in the moment, my head logic went, hey, Matt, guess what? You get to improvise Jester right now in front of Laura, and a little part of my brain went, oh, God, no. <laughs> Why do I do this to myself? <laughs> I still don't even remember anything I said, but I think that's probably exactly that's how Jester point. works. Exactly. Yeah, so. I don't remember anything she says. It's the best. <laughs> Just no thoughts, head empty, and we love that. I mean, I, I'd be lying if I didn't say Dariax was inspired by you doing Jester me going, oh, you can just have Stop. nothing in there and it just go. goes out. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's just elevator music on a recorder up there. It's just very nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's so freeing, you guys. <laughs> Sorry. Well, anyway, uh, Laura. Yes. Marisha. Oh. Okay. I'm, I'm so happy I'm no longer frightening you guys. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, since landing on Ruidus, Imogen and Laudna have been going nonstop and connecting with bigger threats and, you know, Delilah, it's kind of not a great thing. But in all this chaos, how's their relationship? <laughs> What's going on? Um, have any of the recent events changed it in one way or another? And like, do you guys have like matching friendship bracelets or rings or anything? What's going on there? <laughs> we are unaware. I, I am unaware of what is happening fully with Laudna and Delilah. Because Correct. you're hiding it much more. And I'm, I'm, yeah. I have a feeling it's because of what happened in, the, in Nanamori's trials. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I have no basis to approach you and go, what's going on? Because you've hidden it all. You should read her yeah. texts. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying real hard not to sneak into people's heads anymore, you know? Yeah, well, it's due to the trials. And it's, uh, it lives rent-free in Laudna and Marisha's brain. I think about it all the time. Imogen looking at her and being like, I'm, I hate that she's watching us. And we haven't been able to talk about it. Um... Yeah, so maybe we'll talk about it. I mean, it is, it's, it's really awful to think that any intimate moment that you would share with somebody is being watched by somebody completely horrible that has horrible intentions. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> That's correct. Um, it's like knowing that Travis is always watching. <laughs> Yeah, so she's having a hard time processing that one, doesn't really know what to do with it. And then on top of that, I think Laudna is struggling with the idea of like seeing Imogen and Fern to an extent on the moon and you having these, you are literally floating and being lifted above. And there was this moment where it was like, it once again is burned into my brain of Laudna grabbing you and trying to hold you down and then it messed with Marisha's head because I was like oh I am literally holding her back I am literally holding her down and now I don't know what to do with any of that this guy was so dark has that happened yet has that happened yet on, on the stream oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. okay I feel like we would have heard a collective gasp if it hadn't. Uh, I just disassociated from my body. <laughs> it did, right? They said yeah. Wait. Okay. Well, it was a very muted yeah, so I didn't know if it was like, it happened, it happened. can we get a resounding did cheer if it happened? Did Chetney die in his sleep yet on this? <laughs> or is that the next, that's the next episode, I think. Okay. Sweaty. <laughs> Especially because all of these That's answers sad. are so muted. <laughs> That's so sad. I know. 
You all should talk about it. Save yeah. it for the table. Yeah, save it for the table, but well, definitely so like, like... Are we just going to have a moment right now? Okay. You, you all have a lot of stuff to process, and you haven't given yourself like an evening rest to reconnect, so you, uh, next time you have an opportunity, How I would think we? you all should do that. You still gotta, you still gotta sleep and eat and take care of yourselves in between the run and the chaos and next and chance. And poop. <laughs> also very important. We'll role play through all that too. I mean, seriously though, how are we pooping, y'all? How is this happening? I don't think I poop. <laughs> no, you just penny. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's like calories don't count on vacation. You don't poop on the moon. Is that? Is oh. that? Yeah. No. I was just, when you're on when you're on vacation, it's really hard. I was just imagining so those, little, those little penny vacation. presses that you get at Disneyland, so that every everywhere <gasps> we go, you just leave your face on a little coin. Oh. Sort of like, <laughs> it slowly flattens. Let's out. think about this for a moment. Yeah, Which yeah, characters yeah. in all three campaigns yeah. canonically yeah. in role playing have poop? Frog, Scanlan. Scanlan. Yes. Fern has goat pelleted. Pike? Pike pooped? Oh, she did. Yes, I pooed on a bed. Pooed on a bed. Not to brag. <laughs> Jester, I think Jester pooped in a lake. <laughs> what? She certainly talked about pooping a lot. Did, did you I? just not tell anybody? Or did I shit in a lake tonight? Did you just poop in a lake and not say it? Maybe in my head I just went out and pooped in a lake and I didn't say it out loud. <laughs> Wait, is that just Laura? <laughs> no. <laughs> Laura, have you pooped in a lake and not told anybody? No. We are afters of fine art. <laughs> Great parts of our time. Wait, did that really not happen and I fully just thought it did? Does Keila, does Keila keep her antlers on when she poops? <laughs> You know what would suck? Having to move the cape. It's like a wedding dress and you have to have multiple people hold it while you poop. It, that's, it's awful. That's where the toilet paper rolls go. <laughs> On the antlers! Oh, man. That makes sense. Yeah. I bet wow. you're all so happy you came here early on a Sunday morning. <laughs> idea a book it's everybody poops but it's all the characters of the campaign <laughs> don't give laura ideas hey laura uh idea i kind of love it Woo! we'll talk you're welcome critters Woo! Poop book. <laughs> and it's it's definitely just jester narrating the whole thing Woo! love you what have you done i love an instigator of chaos. Why do you keep bringing me back? To be normal? No. no. How no. dare you? We like it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, surprisingly, this was not as much uh, crowd cat wrangling as possible on this stage, so we have some time for some uh, fan Q&As. Right? Ooh. Right? Uh, careful. No pushing. Be careful, no pushing, no shoving. Yeah, respectfully, find your place in the line. We'll trade Maybe. your questions in new order. Something about hands and feet inside and the... the... Does the doggy have a question? There's oh, does the doggy get a question? Oh, we do have dueling He's sprinkles just been laying there like such a good boy and it's... What's up, Artie? I want to go hey. so bad. Uh, so, how does the solstice affect our target? Because it's kind of unclear if he's a god or just an arch... <laughs> That's a good question. Um, well, he's he's not a god. He was he was on a track of faith to to begin to have powers on a much larger scale than even as an archfate he had access to, or at least a more uh, larger breadth of it. So the solstice itself uh, had probably probably messed with and shifted some of his power and focus. But he's he's an adaptable fella. You know, he takes takes what's going to him. As far as his power scale uh, and where he is. Later in canon, you should definitely check out the comic series we've been working on because we get to see a we get we get a fun, weird perspective on our antagonist as a a protagonist. <laughs> kind of, I don't know. Um, but uh, it definitely gives a little more insight into his his history and what what the other Fae think of him. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I have to say antagonist because you said it, and I was just like, it, it, yeah, I could not say it. That's bad. Yeah. <laughs> Other spring. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi. Do a sprinkle? Oh. Uh, my question is for Talison and Liam. <laughs> if Molly didn't die, would Caleb and Molly be a thing? It, would that, Caleb and Molly become a thing? I mean, we would have needed a lot more role time, uh, role play yeah, time I mean, to figure that out. Define thing, I suppose. I mean, in, in, in a perfect world, I feel like Molly would have slowly made made his way through most of the group. Like, it's been great. Anyway, 
Yeah. That's valid. I mean, it really... It's a situationship. It would be a lot of situation. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not complicated, just chronological. It's fine. Yeah, it's just, uh... I don't know. I, I think it's not alphabetical. <laughs> Potentially with enough role play time, but Molly uh, expired. Uh, when Molly expired, Caleb was still really tightly bottled up, so I don't think he was in a place to do anything with anybody, no. but add another 50 more episodes with Molly. No, it would have been an awful lot of you need to get drunk and get laid and get this out of your system would have been a very, very... Uh, yeah, would have been a heavy roll there of, of <laughs> no, no more of this. No. So... I mean, Come on, we're gonna go make some friends. Come on. <laughs> I mean, Caleb's technically canonically poly, so I mean, <clears throat> two purple guys and Caleb. <laughs> Why stop there? <laughs> At four. Polycule. Yeah. Polycule. Work, work your way through the crayon box. <laughs> well, well, I was gonna say Molly's more just of a slut, but he's now, you know. Stage left. What do you got? Hey, I've been a big fan of you guys since you were here last. So on 2019, keep on cutting. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, okay. Go for it. Anyway, um, my question is, even though Mika, um, Mika talked about it, was the whole banishment thing, because there was a lot more going on than just the banishment between the characters and also the, the uh, actual, you know, your players. And so I was just wondering, because um, um, Liam kind of kind of led on a little bit with Sam about, oh, banish, and then all of a sudden he says banish, and then all of a sudden Marisha says, hey, I wonder if we can use that on yourself, and all that, and it all just kind of happened. I don't know if it was kind of a kismic moment, and everybody was just kind of playing off of everyone else. It was just a really, you know, interesting moment. I was just wondering what you guys thought about that. I mean, it's kind of how a lot of it happens at the table. Like, first off, as if anyone's noticed how Sam Regal plays this game, he, he, he plays the fool, but carries a lot of really smart things close to his chest. Huh? <laughs> so I don't know if he already had that in the chamber and then everyone else at the table kind of came to the realization at the same time. To be fair, I wasn't paying attention because as any GM out there knows, when you're having to juggle this many players at the table as well as like multiple scenes across different things and you know, concurrent timelines, I miss half of the stuff they're talking about <laughs> through each other. So you guys should answer this question more than me. Yeah, it was, uh, I mean that spell, there was literally, I had, I, had one, I had one spell slot left and I was trying to go through the list of Things that she couldn't counterspell, or uh, what's the other thing when? Yeah, like the the what if, when they're really super f legendary resistance. Yeah, that. <laughs> um, I was trying to think of things that sh that wouldn't that she couldn't save against, and that was the only one that maybe could possibly work. But yeah, when we're at the table in those super high intensity moments, um, it's it's all hands on deck, and uh, there's lots of. It's metagaming pigeons going around. Yeah, I feel like we all kind of will share this like subconscious where we know we know the goal and we'll say things like, how can we get you out of here? And then all just start looking at our toolbox to see what options that we have. And then sometimes we'll kind of all... We have telepathic bonds yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. for every episode. So anything you hear, there's also a... A mental conversation happening. I'd also say too, like there's a distinct difference between like metagaming about character knowledge versus players discussing what all the characters know they have access to, in which case it's just friends strategizing together. So like, it doesn't bother me at all when players are discussing strategy amongst each other and kind of giving suggestions about things they already are capable of doing and have in their, you know, their wheelhouse. We are not our characters. Many of my characters that I've played are far more intelligent, far more cunning, and far more handsome uh, <laughs> through most of my gaming experience. So you find you have that experience of, you know, as players, working together to strategize what you would think your character would already understand. And that's kind of that distinction, too. Plus, you know, we take our role play pretty seriously. We have our heads shoved up the butts of our role play pretty, pretty high. But also, it's a game, and we like having fun together. I mean, it really is as simple as that. <laughs> uh, Stage right. Let's go. Looking, yeah, I'm looking at my clock, and also this giant timer. I think this is our last question. Oh. One more after this. I lied. Hi there. Um, just wanted to, um, if we could all, my little sister is here because this is her college graduation present and she didn't get to walk in 2020. So we just wanted to shout her out and say congratulations. 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 Yeah. Um, my question is 
for Matt as a fellow lover of world building. Um, what was your favorite thing to create? Like when you're creating a new world or anything, like is it cosmology, is it politics? I can barely look at you. Um. <laughs> oh man, uh, I mean, I, I like all the different facets of it. For me, what I love to create are really weird historical relics. Meaning like ruins that make me and the players go, how did that happen? You know, like it's one thing to like, oh, you come upon a, rum a crumbled city, that's fine. It's a different thing when you come upon a crumbled city that's, you know, thousands of feet beneath the, the planet's surface and is like just er erupting out of rock walls for no reason, but still seems pristine and beautiful in other places untouched. You know, that's leaving those little threads of, of weirdness and unexpected mystery about a, a location or you know, sometimes even an individual that leaves everyone going, what's that about? I want to learn more about it. And that's what gets me excited, because I often don't know what that answer is when I first create it. And then once I put it on the page, I start logicking out why it exists and trying to fit it in my mind. And hopefully they have the opportunity to ask those questions and I get to reveal that. So that's, that's what I enjoy the most. All right, this is over here is our last question. Oh, we gotta go Hello? over to the stage left. Mika, a, no, no, it's no, not no, 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 how do you guys like playing D and D? Was it how or why? Why? Why do you guys like playing D and D? We love playing with our friends. We get to use our imaginations and pretend and do things we otherwise wouldn't normally be able to do ourselves. And that's so much fun being able to use our imagination no matter what age we are. And you are adorable. Thank you so much for that question. I hope you get to play D and D. And here's the cool thing too. It doesn't have to be just D and D. There are a lot of great games out there that give you the same wonderful, joyful experience. d just happens to be the one that we all met on. Also, Is that a little pet taste? Yeah, look, that's the cutest lawn I've ever oh seen in my, my life. Goodness, you're so pretty. <laughs> you must be a lady. Aw, okay. And Hi, I'm Cole. Uh, I'm from Spokane. Uh, my question's for Tal. Um, the jacket that I'm wearing, my battle jacket, is loosely inspired by Ashton, and I want to add a quote or something, uh, or a punk aphorism, or something from Ashton, or just something that you think he would support and want out there. Oh, man. I mean, I've got, like, queer magic here. I've got the just don't on the back. Mm -hmm. I've Wait, got... Can you see the shoulder? Nazis can you explain? Right because I'm Brand seeing, like... Bash. So, uh, what's, yeah, can you show off the shoulder? That yeah, it looks oh, so... Give us a turn. Oh. Give us a turn. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's rad. Ooh. Oh, the just on the shoulder. The sparkle hitting oh, from the spotlight is epic. I have been working on it for a few years. As, like, the best, I've been thinking back to the jackets of my youth. Uh, I've, I've Hell been yeah. thinking about the, like, the jackets that the, the kids in LA used to have in the 90s, and, like, the, like they were, like, decades-long projects, and, like, some of the guys I know had, you know, these kids had been working on them for their whole lives. I don't know, man. I'm trying to think, like, what would... Bagels, yum. Yeah. Bagels. If you don't have anything, yeah. it's gonna be life needs things to live. I mean, honestly, that's pretty solid. Uh, it's Jackets like that are just such a good way of communicating to a bunch of people who you want to talk to and, and who, if they're in a point where who they want to talk to, it's just, it's, I mean, that's my, that's my big thing with any good jacket is it's a really good way of making sure that you're going to be both finding the right friends wherever you go and somebody who needs a friend at that moment can go, oh, right over here and run in that direction. So, that is the goal all the time. Mm, then you. you know, you know, you're fine. Woo! That thing is gorgeous, by the way. Well, thank you guys for all of your questions. I have one last question for everybody on this couch and also Matt on the chair. Happy nine year anniversary. Woo! celebrating nine whole years of Critical Role this month, and is there anything you can tease about the future when it turns double digits? <gasps> I'll say it definitely feels stiffer. <laughs> it crackles every time okay, it gets up in the morning. Matt. No, Laura. It, it, no, Matt. Joints. No, Laura. Joints. exact same thing until he did this and I was like oh you mean joy you're bad you're bad sorry I should have known better you're, you're right Laura. yeah I, I will say I feel like it is it never ceases to amaze us not only how many people have 
and continue to watch us, but have stuck with us through all of these years and uh, continue to show interest in the things that we say and uh, can confirm we have some massive plans coming up in the very, very near future. Ten year is, we're looking ahead to it right now uh, and want to really make it a massive celebration uh, for everyone in the community. So yeah, there's some big stuff it, just pay attention, follow us on socials, it's, it's going to be great. Wow, what a perfect end to that. I have a big red sign that says, time's up. Aww. Aww. Um, it also says, press delete to reset. And so... escape to exit. Uh, unfortunately, we have to so press true. escape and not delete. Uh, but thank you guys, everybody, for coming. I hope you enjoyed the panel. Yeah, give yourself a big hand for showing up. We love you guys. Love you. Love you. Can we just, can we just get up? Can we Nagel from AJ Films 28 and thank you so much for watching my videos. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and click on that subscribe button now. Have any comments? Let me know what you think and I'll keep making more videos for you. Thanks again so much. Bye-bye.